today our topic is second week of development before we start your topic let me remind you to please like share and subscribe my channel now come to the topic uh, before we start the uh, events of second week let's have a quick review in first week in first week the main events which took place after fertilization were a uh, formation of two cell zygotes then morula and then blastula and blastocyst formation we had already discussed all the events of first week, uh, first week in our previous video you can get the link in the description of this video second week starts uh, with uh, some major events which are completion of implantation decidual reaction formation of bilaminar disc formation of amniotic and exosomatic cavities formation of extra embryonic mesoderm and extra embryonic coelom and appearance of connecting stalk and the formation of uterine plasma and the circulation and appearance of primary chorionic villi so uh, let's begin with completion of uh, implantation here we need to make a concepts very clear about the normal implantation and abnormal implantation which is called ectopic pregnancy in first picture you guys can see the fertilized egg is implanted in the normal side of uterus which is superior and posterior wall of uterus on the other side this is abnormal implantation which results in ectopic pregnancy simply when zygote implants other than normal site of the uterus the implantation is abnormal and the pregnancy is called ectopic pregnancy guys decidual reaction is also occurring in second week and first we need to know about uh, decidual decidual is basically endometrium of uh, pregnant uterus decidual reactions are called when endometrium becomes thicker and more vascular endometrial glands become full of secretions connective tissue cells enlarge due to the accumulation of lipid and glycogen now we will learn about one of the uh, main image of second week the formation of bilaminar embryonic disc by the eighth day of development under the heading of this uh, we will be discussing the changes that are happening in two layers trophoblast and embryoblast guys let me remind you about uh, the last event of the first week in which differentiating of trophoblast into cytotrophoblast and syncytotrophoblast was done we know till the end of the first week we had two cell layers one was trophoblast outer cell layer and other was embryoblast the inner cell mass as we know by the end of the first week outer cell the trophoblast further had divided into two layers cytotrophoblast and syncytotrophoblast now in second week we will see that uh, what further changes are occurring into the cytotrophoblast and syncytotrophoblast as well as in inner cell mass which is embryoblast now embryoblast differentiates into two layers epiblast and hypoblast these two layers um, actually form a bilaminar disc next uh, event is formation of two cavities amniotic and exosomatic cavity by the ninth day formation of amniotic cavity and exosomatic cavity is done with the contribution of epiblast and hypoblast cell layers once the embryoblast is differentiated into epiblast and hypoblast soon a smaller cavity uh, is formed into the epiblast here the red circle is showing epiblast layer and a smaller cavity is formed in the epiblast layer earlier it is smaller and later it will become a larger cavity which is known as amniotic cavity meanwhile the cells of hypoblast start proliferating and migrating towards the cytotrophoblast the hypoblastic cells actually forms a membrane called exosomatic membrane or huser membrane now let's discuss about the role of the huser membrane in the formation of other cavity soon huser membrane surrounds the whole blastocyst and forms a new cavity called exosomatic cavity or primary yolk sac at the uh, place of previous blastocyst
Now we will discuss further changes which are occurring in second week of development like formation of extraembryonic mesoderm, formation of extraembryonic coelom or chorionic cavity and splitting of extraembryonic mesoderm into two layers that are extraembryonic somatic mesoderm and extraembryonic splanchnic mesoderm and appearance of connecting stalk which is also called body stalk. Next change is formation of extraembryonic mesoderm by the uh, 12th day to, uh, 10 to 12th and uh, guys these changes that we are going to discuss now are needed to be understand very carefully how extraembryonic mesoderm is formed Actually, new population of cells are now going to appear between inner side of cytotrophoblast and outer surface of exosilomic cavity or primary yolk sac. These cells are basically derived from primary yolk sac. And uh, what's happening next? Some isolated species appear into newly formed extraembryonic mesoderm, and soon these species merge and form a cavity which is called extra embryonic coelom or chorionic cavity. What's happening next? Due to formation of this chorionic cavity, extra embryonic mesoderm is split into two layers. One is called somatic mesoderm which co covers the amnion and uh, other is splanchnic mesoderm which covers the primary yolk. Guys, here uh, let me tell you about amnion. It is actually a pair dome shaped part of amniotic cavity and adjusted to the cytotrophoblast. Now we will discuss about chorion connecting stock and uh, secondary yolk sac that are also forming in the second week of development. Let's talk about chorion, actually, uh, cytotrophoblast. Sensitive trophoblast and extra embryonic somatic mesoderm collectively are called chorion. And connecting stalk, which is also called body stalk, is formed when a part of extra embryonic mesoderm connects the roof of amniotic cavity with the chorion. Later, uh, development of uh, connecting stalk, stalk will give rise to the umbilical cord. And how a secondary uh, yolk sac is formed? When primary yolk sac is pinched off by the cells of extra embryonic mesoderm, the secondary yolk sac is formed. In the last, we will discuss about the formation of uteroplast in circulation and appearance of primary chorionic villi. Let's begin with the formation of uteroplast in circulation. Here, some changes are occurring in the maternal endometrial. Capris and some changes are taking place in the thin trophoblast of developing embryo. So first we will discuss about the changes which are taking place in the thin trophoblast of developing embryo. Here smaller spaces appear into the thin uh, trophoblast and these spaces are called lacunae. Uh, these spaces form the intercommunicating network. And what's happening into the maternal endometrium? The capillaries become dilated and congested with blood, and these congested capillaries are now called sinusoids. Now, uh, cells of syncytial trophoblast start eroding the maternal sinusoids, and it becomes continuous with the sinusoids. And soon, blood releases from sinusoids and enters the lacunar system of syncytial trophoblast, and maternal blood flows through the cytotrophoblast lacunar system. Now let's discuss about the formation of primary chorionic villi. By the end of the 30th day, a number of uh, finger-like outgrowths develop on the trophoblasts, which are called primary chorionic villi. The second week of development is also known as week of two because the trophoblast differentiates into two layers that are cytotrophoblasts and syncytial trophoblasts. The embryoblast forms two layers, that is the epiblast and hyperblast. Extra embryonic mesoderm is split into two layers, that is the somatic and splanchnic layer, and two cavities form, that are neotic and yolk sac cavities. So development of second weeks ends here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, for more videos, and if you like the video, press the like button and share the video. Thank you.